Hi, this is Billy Bean here with another segment of Bible by Billy Bean. Today's date is July 10, 2022. New, early in June, there was a cyber attack on YouTube and my channel went away and my equipment went away. So I have new equipment and I have a new channel. I have a subscribe button in the lower right corner of my screen. Thanks for like, subscribe, and share. Today's lesson, this will be ep episode 68 of the Bible by Billy Bean from the Passion Translation, Proverbs chapter 28, part 1, verses 1 to 16. And the title is, Good Leaders Reign Long. So I'd like to say, Thanks, like, subscribe, and share, and I'd like to welcome back all 50 states, including Alaska, Hawaii, the First Nations, Cherokee, Navajo, Hopi, Chickasaw, Mohawk, Apache, First Nation, Pitt River in California, Mohegans, Yakima Nation in Washington State, Potawatomi in the Midwest, Oklahoma, Ojibwe Nation in Northern Minnesota, proud people who want peace and justice. Choctaw, Abenaki Tribe, Cheyenne, Massantucket, Pequot, Blackfoot in Montana, Spokane in Coville, Powhatan, Seminoles in Florida, Red Crow Tribe in Kentucky, Salt River Tribe in Arizona. And to welcome back the nations of Canada, England, France, Ireland, Philippines, South Africa, Netherlands, also called Holland. Indonesia, Scotland, Germany, Switzerland, New Zealand, Maldives, Nepal, Norway, Australia, Chile, Thailand, Belgium, Mexico, Brazil, Russia, Panama, Guam, U.S. Territory, Jamaica, and Iceland are living in Spain and other people in Spain, Wales in the U.K., Sweden, Italy, Puerto Rico, a U.S. Territory, Romania, Bermuda, Bahamas, British Territories, Morocco, Argentina, Northern Marianas Island, a U.S. Territory, Denmark, Bolivia, Uganda, Iceland, Ser Serbia, Bulgaria, Mauritius, a small island nation off of Africa, and the newest, Ukraine, the Czech Republic, Poland, Costa Rica, Malta, China, Hungary, Israel, and Finland. So let's get started with the lesson for today. And we have information about um, the Torah and the considered to be the Hebrew form of the Bible. The Torah was the first five books. And I believe was also recognized by Islam and other religions in terms of history and other information. Okay, so in verse 1 we have, it's talking up about the boldness of a lion, which can also be uh, compared to confidence. So we know when we have God with us, we are bold and have confidence. This is talking about a rebellious nation. And let's recall in the Bible, rebellion is um, uh, often interpreted as witchcraft. So a rebellious nation will have one leader after another. It will lack stability in its leadership. Being poor spiritually can also be interpreted as an example of being a nation being poor spiritually is corrupt judges okay now we have we're seeing some sources we have hebrew we have aramaic this was a common language spoken during the time of Jesus and, and the early Bible. And we have the Septuagint, which is the Greek form of the Hebrew Bible. So, uh, this is talking about 
living your life based on what you've been taught and they're describing it as the Torah which we interpret as being um, the first five books of the Old Testament being taught uh, spiritual truths about God translates the same in the Aramaic and the Septuagint and the uh, verses 4, 7, and 9 talk about don't turn your back on what you've been taught and build a wall around yourself and this is a sound wall also in your mind so that you know what is the difference between right and wrong. Okay. And we see verse 12 talking about wicked leaders of a nation. And what they, a wicked leader does, the impact on the good people, God-fearing people in the nation is that they can become victims of evil being perpetrated upon them. Now verse 15 is alluding to lion and bear. And we recall King David as a young shepherd boy killed a lion and a bear. And this is uh, to remind us to use good, sound Bible teaching to live our lives so that we are in practice of overcoming uh, temptations, fighting battles before we have a major battle in our life, such as David had with Goliath. David was assured he was going to take down this giant now, David was 16 years old, and information that came from uh, John Paul Jackson, Jesus came to him like in a vision or a dream, took him back in the past, and he saw King David. And King David was a man about my size, 5'2", 120 pounds. So King David couldn't boast that he was able to overcome lion, bear, Goliath on his own. No, he had to tell the truth. God was with him. And Goliath uh, uh, was a Nephilim, and we understood, uh, stood about five foot tall. And David would have been... Uh, Five, about five foot two inches and a slight man and Goliath with nine foot would have weighed what 400 500 pounds yeah so David was accurate in saying God is with me so now we'll do our uh, reading this is Proverbs from the Passion Translation Chapter 28, Part 1, Verses 1 to 16. Guilty criminals experience paranoia even though no one threatens them. But the innocent lovers of God, because of righteousness, will have the boldness of a young ferocious lion. A rebellious nation is thrown into chaos. But leaders anointed with wisdom will restore law and order. When a pauper oppresses the destitute, it's like a flash flood that sweeps away their last hope. Those who turn their backs on what they know is right will no longer be able to tell right from wrong. But those who love the truth strengthen their souls. Justice never makes sense to men devoted to darkness, but those tenderly devoted to the Lord can understand justice perfectly. It's more respectable to be poor and pure than rich and perverse. To be obedient to what you've been taught 
proves you're an honorable child. But to socialize with the lawless brings shame to your parents. Go ahead and get rich on the backs of the poor, but all the wealth you gather will one day be given to those who are kind to the needy. If you close your heart and refuse to listen to God's instruction, even your prayer will be despised. Those who tempt the lovers of God with an evil scheme will fall into their own trap. But the innocent who resists temptation will experience reward. The wealthy in their conceit presume to be wise, but a poor person with discernment can see right through them. The triumphant joy of God's lovers releases great glory. But when the wicked rise to power, everyone goes into hiding. If you cover up your sin, you'll never do well. But if you confess your sins and forsake them, you will be kissed by mercy. Overjoyed is the one who with tender heart trembles before God, but the stubborn, unyielding heart will experience even greater evil. Ruthless rulers can only be compared to raging lions and roaring bears. Abusive leaders fail to employ wisdom. But leaders who despise corruption will enjoy a long and full life. A murderer's conscience will torment him and he will be a fugitive haunted by guilt all the way to the grave with no one to support him. The pure will be rescued from failure. So. That's good. We need to stay on the side of the Lord. Okay, a short prayer. This is a modified prayer from General Patton in World War II who asked his chaplain, write a prayer for us to have good weather so that we can overcome our enemy, which happened. And General Patton said, get me that chaplain. I want to decorate him because he stands in good with the Lord. Okay. Father, grant us fair weather. Arm your soldiers with your power. Guide us from victory to victory and crush our enemies. And we thank you, Father, Son, Jesus, and many call Yeshua, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God honors the prayers of military people and he looks upon his sons and daughters as soldiers in the battle for good upon the earth to overcome evil. And we say, we are, Father. And I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there. Continue to pray. God is in charge, and he is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.